In 2014, the House of Representatives filed a lawsuit challenging some components of the Obama administration's implementation of the Affordable Care Act. This is the latest in a series of legal attacks on the ACA. One of the House's claims was that reimbursement that's provided to insurers to reduce cost sharing for low-income enrollees is illegal. The case will be decided by a district court judge next spring. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Managing Editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm talking with Timothy Jost, a professor of law at the Washington and Lee University School of Law. Professor Jost has written a perspective article about the lawsuit over cost-sharing reductions. Professor Jost, was the cost-sharing reduction program you describe in your article always a part of the ACA? And if so, why is the legal challenge arising just now? Yes, it has been a part of the ACA since the beginning. The ACA provided two kinds of subsidies for low- and moderate-income Americans whose income was above the Medicaid eligibility level to make health insurance affordable and to make health care affordable. The first is the premium tax credits, which reduce the amount that individuals with incomes below 400% of poverty have to pay for their health insurance premiums so that they will be able to afford health insurance. But as we all know, it's not enough to just be able to afford health insurance if the policy you get is a very high deductible policy or a policy with other kinds of high cost sharing. And so Congress included a second provision that would, for at least for people with incomes below 250% of the poverty level, would actually reduce the amount that they would have to pay in cost sharing and deductibles and co-insurance and co-payments and reduce their out-of-pocket limit so that they would actually be able to afford health care and not just health insurance. This was there from the beginning. The argument of the House, however, is that although Congress created this program, It did not fund the health care cost-sharing reduction program, and therefore, unless Congress votes an appropriation on a year-to-year basis, the program cannot be funded. The statute requires health insurers to reduce cost-sharing and then says that they shall be reimbursed by the federal treasury, but Congress says the money isn't there, or the House has said in this lawsuit The money is not there for the cost-sharing reduction payments, and therefore the insurers can't be paid. And so therefore, by the House's argument, it's illegal for the Department of Health and Human Services to issue these reimbursements. That's the argument, yes, that in the absence of an explicit annual appropriation, it is illegal for the government to reimburse insurers for reducing the cost-sharing. In your article, you say that In the past, federal courts have generally rejected lawsuits brought by members of Congress against administrations. Why have the courts consistently not wanted to hear that sort of argument? What sort of example can you give us? Well, there have been quite a number of cases in which congressmen have sued the administration to try to enforce legal provisions that they believed were there in legislation that Congress had passed. I believe that there were some lawsuits, for example, during the Vietnam War challenging the administration's position on that war. But what the courts have said pretty consistently is that if the Congress believes the administration is not doing what Congress instructed it to do through laws, that Congress has lots of ways of addressing those concerns. And we are seeing this, of course, happening right now. Congress can hold oversight hearings. Congress can require people to come from the administration and explain what they're doing. Congress can add appropriations riders. Congress can pass appropriations bills that limit what the administration does in some ways. And we've seen all of these things happening over the past couple of years as the Republicans have controlled Congress and the Democrats the White House. In this case, however, Congress, or specifically the House of Representatives, the Senate did not join in this, but specifically the House of Representatives, has filed a lawsuit and asked the courts to enforce its will on the administration. And in this case, actually, when the court considered the motion to dismiss on grounds of jurisdiction, Judge Collier did, in fact, say that with respect to the other part of the case, there were actually two claims that were made in this case, which concerned the delay of the enforcement of the employer mandate. 
that that was simply a matter of difference of interpretation between the House and the administration, and therefore it was not appropriate for the court to get involved in that dispute. But Judge Collier did go on to say that appropriations are a matter of the constitutional authority of Congress, and therefore disputes about appropriations stand on a different footing. The parties, in fact, the House and the administration filed briefs in this case last week on the merits. And from those briefs, it's clear that this also is simply a dispute over the interpretation of the law. And therefore, at least in my opinion, the court should have treated it the same way and just thrown this out as a garden variety dispute between Congress and the administration or the House and the administration over the interpretation of the law. But in fact, Judge Collier refused to dismiss the case, and she will decide in the spring whether the administration can reimburse insurers for reductions in cost sharing or not. If she decides against the administration, there'll certainly be an appeal. Through all of this, is there any immediate threat to the program? No. If Judge Collier rules for the House on the merits, which again probably won't happen until the spring, it's very unlikely that the Court of Appeals would allow the case, or perhaps even Judge Collier, would bring the program to an end while the appeal was being pursued. There's just too many people and too much money riding on this case. Ultimately, if the Court of Appeals should rule for the House, or perhaps even the Supreme Court, that would, of course, threaten the cost-sharing reduction payment. In the government's brief, though, that was filed last week, they make an interesting argument that was supported by an analysis done by ASPE, the Assistant Secretary for Evaluation and Planning of HHS, of what would happen in that case. And their projection is that if that happened, the insurers would simply have to raise the premiums, which clearly are covered by appropriated funds, the premium tax credits, to cover the money that they lost through the elimination of the cost-sharing reduction payments. And because of the way that the premium tax credits are calculated, that would ultimately cost the government more money than simply paying out the cost-sharing reduction payments. But I think another very important consideration here is simply for the stability of the health insurance markets and marketplaces. And we've seen in the past couple of months the co-op plans created in the ACA running into some trouble. United Healthcare, one of the biggest insurers in the country, although not one of the biggest players in the marketplaces, threatening to pull out of the marketplaces for next year. And I think the last thing we need right now is one more challenge to the stability of health insurance coverage in the marketplace. So even though in the end this may work out through higher premium tax credits, I think in the interim it's a problem if we have one more challenge to the stability of the health insurance markets on which millions of Americans currently depend. In fact, how concerned are insurers about this particular case? Has there been any disruption in insurance markets as a result of it so far? Well, I'm sure insurers are watching this case very closely, but as of this point, I have not seen any analysis that shows that it has, in fact, affected participation or premiums. I think when we would start to see that would be in the spring of this year when insurers will have to file their premium requests for 2017 and determine whether they're going to participate in the market for 2017. And by then, we should have Judge Collier's decision and possibly some indication as to where the Court of Appeals might be going with this. Thank you, Professor Dost.